Few transit lines around the world get folks as heated as Barcelona Metro's Line 9 and 10. Much like the works of Catalonia's beloved Antony Gaudi, it's quite extravagant and can sometimes divide opinion. Some like to clown it for just how nonsensical it seems, and how it's still incomplete after over 20 years, while others hail it as an engineering masterstroke and a demonstration of just what is possible with a bit of creativity. What's the real truth? Well, as with a lot of things, the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Let's go take it for a ride and find out for ourselves. The line, or lines depending on how you look at it, really came to be to fill the need of orbital travel around Barcelona, as well as hopefully relieving the existing lines 1, 3, and 5 that span large distances across the city centre. It would also provide direct access to important landmarks like Parc Gué, Camp Nou, and the airport. The main section of the line would be built in the rather iconic single bore design, with the tracks stacked on top of each other, and the stations built into the bore. This was largely necessary due to issues with the soil that prevented cut and cover from being viable, as well as having to maneuver an already dense city and all of the existing metro and even mainline rail tunnels along the way. Construction commenced in 2002 and opening was planned for 2008. And I'm sure that when you hear that year, alarm bells are already going off in your head. The 2008 financial crisis was not kind to Spain, and government funding for transit and especially this project was severely cut with the pandemic not helping either. The current expected completion date is reported variously as either being 2027 at best, or 2030 at worst. But enough talking, let's go ride. We start today at Zona Universitaria, the northern terminus of the southern section, if that makes sense. Here we see the huge elevator lobby that takes you down to the platforms, which is kinda giving the flip side tower from Super Paper Mario just a little bit. With the stacked track design, both platforms face the same way, which allows for the shared access lobby. You get whisked down to a level halfway between the two platforms, and it's a short way up or down a smaller elevator, or the stairs, to get to your desired platform. Here at the platform, you can see full height screen doors, and yes, the trains here are driverless. There's a 9000 series, yet another Alstom Metropolis variant, and of course, I'll get the front view. Here we go. This is the only part of the Barcelona metro that has announcements in not just Catalan but also Spanish and English, presumably because it goes to the airport. We're passing by the site of the future Camp New station, which we'll check out on the ground in a bit more detail later in the video. There's been much attention on the design of the stations and the tunnel, but as with the 7000 and 8000 series on lines 3 and 1 respectively, the 9000 series trains here have a lot of neat features. On top of being driverless, of course, the info screens display an ETA for important destinations on the line, which is very useful given how long it'll be when it's completed. The front of the trains can also expand into a ramp in the event of an evacuation. The tunnels are too narrow to fit a sidewalk to be used in an evacuation, but given that the tracks are powered overhead and not by third rail, it is pretty safe to walk on them. The ride quality was not the smoothest if I'm being honest, and the trains being limited to 80 km per hour does pose a bit of a challenge for a line that's meant to provide fast orbital travel. However, I do imagine that the experience will get better when frequencies are higher. The trains on the line are 5 cars long, which hopefully won't be a problem when frequency does get increased, but just in case, it is theoretically super easy to expand stations if ever needed because they're inside the port. Just assuming that money was no object, of course. Another nice perk of the stack layout comes after Cantrias, where lines 9 and 10 split. Normally, you'd need flyovers for a setup like this, but now the tracks can simply go in their own ways without crossing over each other. Now we're in the line 9 branch towards the airport, where the tracks do eventually merge into a single level in a more traditional subway design. This includes Fira, where I got off, which is near a major convention center and some office blocks. I then walked over to line 10, directly above what is hoped to be an extension of line 2 that would merge onto line 9, 
bringing a second metro line to the airport and one that has a more direct connection to the city center. The next station is quite deep underground with the stacked layout, but unfortunately it lacks the elevator shafts we saw at the beginning, meaning you have to make your way down using snaking escalators or a much smaller elevator, which is a problem at quite a few of the deepest stations. This includes Torrosa and Coy Blanc, which are major transfer points to lines 1 and 5 respectively. Escalators, of course, are normally better than elevators because people will consistently flow, but only having one or two elevators that have to travel quite deep does mean that if you need to use one, you need to be waiting for a couple minutes, which could be the difference between making or missing a train. It's not great for accessibility. Halfway down the escalators, here's a little exhibit that shows the construction of lines 9 and 10. It's all in Catalan, but I found it really fascinating. If you want to just see more trains, though, skip to the timestamp on screen. If you head south on this leg of line 10, you'll eventually pop above ground and also pass the shared depot for the two lines. But let's head back towards Coy Blanc, which is where line 10 trains currently have to terminate, not Zona Universitaria, because of a lack of track ramps. And I can't help but feel that the English voice they chose here might just be a little aggressive, don't you think? Coy Blanc is currently the nearest metro station to Camp Nou, the much revered home of FC Barcelona, though at the time of recording it is still being renovated. However, it is still very refreshing to get the experience of going to a major sporting venue by train and said venue actually being in a dense urban area rather than being surrounded by parking lots. And here's where the Camp Nou station will be, with the immediate area currently served by a stop on Barcelona's tram network. We'll talk about the trams in more detail in a future video, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. So speaking of things that aren't open yet, let's look in more detail at what places the central line 9 and 10 tunnel will go. Between the termini, the two isolated sections right now are planned to be 11 stops, several of which will connect to key locations. There's two stops that connect to FGC suburban railways, Lesseps connects to line 3, and Montaña is right next to Park Gue. The TVMs have been moving, and work is already underway installing utilities and power substations, but needless to say, this entire project has been quite a bumpy ride. Literally. So to conclude, I think the whole Line 9 and 10 project teaches us not only what is possible with transit design and how to adapt to a place's unique challenges, but also just transit discourse in general. A lot of discussion around this line, particularly online I must say, seems overly fixated on whether or not the stack design was good so to speak, when it was an effective solution in Barcelona's circumstances. It may seem strange to do it in other contexts, such as the initial designs for the Bart Silicon Valley extension. More traditional methods would have been just fine for this, because there aren't really any constraints with geology or any existing tunnels to navigate. All it would do is just minimize disruption on the surface. And it should be noted that the Bart Silicon Valley extension is currently assessing all sorts of options to bring costs down. Come on, Alan Fisher, I expect more of you. That video was very poorly researched. There's a tendency among transit fans to believe that what works somewhere will work everywhere, and what has worked for a long time will work forever. Whether it's an aversion to driverless trains, or just calling everything that's unconventional a gadget on, it seems that we're reluctant to change. And despite the funding challenges, Barcelona's transportation engineers deserve a lot of credit for the ingenuity that they took to achieve the line's goal while working with tricky geography. This isn't me saying that lines 9 and 10 are perfect. It does pose significant accessibility challenges in some places, and the cost spiral has led to low frequencies in the initial section because there aren't enough ramps to turn trains. But I do get a little bit annoyed when all discourse on this project is centered simply around whether it should have been a quote-unquote normal subway, and any issue with it is blamed entirely on the design and not other things that might have caused it. I think a place that we see this a lot is with Link Light Rail in Seattle. Every time something goes wrong with Link, the first reaction from a lot of people is, this wouldn't have happened if they built a metro. And yeah, that may be true, 
but there are some parts of Link that are much more suited for light rail, such as most notably the crossing of Lake Washington, which is on a floating bridge that I don't think would actually be able to support heavy rail. That would have meant building quite a long tunnel underneath the lake, which I don't imagine even with Sound Transit seemingly infinite funding, they would have been able to do. And of course, it does deserve a lot of credit just how fast Sound Transit are moving on their projects and how well planned they are. Even though, yeah, you could argue that Link probably could have done with a different mode choice, but hey, they're still working on it, and that deserves a lot of credit. I don't know really, this is all just my dumb opinion. I get excited whenever new transit ideas come to the fray, as long as they actually make sense, of course. There are cases when the term gadget bond is absolutely deserved, such as you, Brisbane. Stop doing trackless trams, come on. <laughs>